Hi everybody, this is Ali Mushtaq. Uh, today's Saturday and it's a pretty lazy day, but it's not a lazy day for what the news today and like what's going on in Virginia. And the reason why I'm concerned is because I actually have family members that are there on their front lines and telling me what are, what's happening and it's freaking the hell out of me. And the thing is, it's freaky because again, my family's there, but also this has been going on for a while. And so there's a lot of people online going, oh my God, like this is new, like why is this new? And you know, I, I just have a problem with that because this isn't new, this isn't shocking. Um, this is a result of history of like colonialism, racism and slavery in this country that's affected people of color. So uh, I'm doing this video to sort of provide a brief education on race in America. And I'm actually doing it now shirtless because I feel like if I'm shirtless, you might actually pay attention to this because you weren't paying attention when we were talking about it. So at least you might pay attention when I'm shirtless. So let's begin. So basically, you know, think back to colonial times during the 16th through maybe 18th century, where Europe was the superpower at the time and they were starting this whole colonial era bullshit, um, where they essentially used the Americas as like the place where raw materials were collected and assembled. Um, and essentially what they did was they imported slaves through the Middle Passage, okay? So America at the get-go has this history of treating people of color like essentially nothing, okay? Now, fast forward to the country's founding. You had something called the Three-Fifths Compromise, okay? Uh, which basically said that people of color, especially blacks, were three-fifths of a human being, okay? So now that's a huge problem because Basically, yeah, they did that for population reasons, and yeah, they tried to do that because they tried to make sure that the South had equal representation um, in government. And so, basically, because they had more people, they're like, oh, well, we don't want, you know, to count all of the blacks in uh, the population, because if they did, then what that meant was... Uh, they would essentially give them more political power. And that's where they came up with that quote unquote compromise. And uh, at the get go though, what that's implicitly saying is that people of color are not full human beings. Okay. And so there's tons of literature on this, but that question of what does it mean to be human has always been plaguing our country and our nation's history. Okay. What does it mean to be a human being? Okay. So, then what we do is we actually have the uh, development of science and technology. And this is where we start to get more literal in terms of what is a human being. And even then, we started to develop pseudosciences of race. So for example, what they did was these crazy uh, experiments on people of color where they were like, oh, well, for some reason, you because you're of color, you have a different head size than somebody who's white. Okay, so because you had a different head size, it's like they automatically put us, uh, people of color, in a separate species of, of, of beings. Okay, so we weren't fully human. Okay, and then eventually the Civil War happened, but guess what happened during after the Civil War? Okay, we had something called the Reconstruction. Okay, now... The reason why the Civil War was not only like, it wasn't just about slavery, but it was also about economics as well, because how is it that the South became, quote unquote, King Cotton? Uh, they were called King Cotton for a reason, because not only were they like uh, more, quote unquote, developed uh, plantation colonies as, uh, as they would be in terms of the state as they got statehood, but it wasn't simply that they, they were called King Cotton because economically they reaped basically tons and tons of money off of slave labor. I mean, that's why they called it King Cotton. The South was an economic powerhouse, okay? And then as a result of it, uh, slavery was that product. So basically, one of the reasons why the South went to war with the North was because the South was very much into maintaining this idea of, again, they could do whatever they want because that was their main economic system, whereas the, short, the North was quote-unquote more industrialized, they were using different kinds of technologies, and by that time you also had things like the cotton gin being developed and stuff like that, so again, like, technology was replacing these people or these workers so it was like okay well we can no longer uh we you know we, we no longer need slave labor and so basically the south went to war with that because that was their major money maker okay then it's interesting because then you hit again post so then you hit the civil war people died and then what happened was 
you then started during you started seeing in the reconstruction era the formation of uh, organizations like the kkk and initially they even infiltrated institutions like the police force and what they did was as they as they became part of the police force they then started enacting certain crimes on people of color especially the black community okay and as they did that as they enacted these forms of violence again like this wasn't something new police brutality isn't something new um that we deal with in contemporary america this has been going on since the onset of the civil war and going on since slavery and going on since the country started okay so this is something where again they're doing it to maintain power okay and it's really weird because in america we never really left these this particular time period of people of color being inherently separate kinds of species okay we were never fully human in a lot of people's consciousness. And so what ended up happening was, as we started to sort of get civil rights, as, start, as soon as, again, uh, we started uh, entering places like the military, we started fighting in wars, it, it was ridiculous because, again, like, even though we might have served, even though people of color were in World War Two and World War One, uh, what ended up happening was we were never granted the same opportunities as whites were. For example, racially restrictive underwriting in particular programming. Okay, so for example, with the VA loans and the FH FHA or the Federal Housing Act loans, like we were never granted that access because we happened to be of color. Okay. And again, like we were not led into the Levitt towns. These were very racially segregated places. And so what ended up happening was we ended up starting to maintain and recreate segregation until we officially ended it later on. But we still, we still sort of, again, because of that history of slavery and because of that history of separation, we still never actually had full integration. And when we did have integration, they fought back. <laughs> um, and I remember like Oprah talk, uh, talking with certain people of color and the idea that you know, they were entering like the first racially integrated schools and they were facing all sorts of harassment, uh, all sorts of, you know, ridicule, all sorts of torture, essentially, just because they were of color and they were now following the law. Okay. And now again, we're slowly starting to become racially aware. But again, like, even though we have this awareness, it's not necessarily gone. Um, but again, institutions like the KKK, institutions like police brutality, and, uh, uh, or problems like police brutality, or even like any other social problems, uh, this has long existed well before Trump, okay? Um, and even like the reason why Trump got elected in the first place was a product of these particular forms of relations. Now, we can go into a much more detail, especially... Um, when we start to look at um, p other people of color, like Latinos, Asians, et cetera, et cetera, but those are entire classes. But the bottom line is, this is a history that we've been dealing with in America for a long, long time now. And suddenly it's gaining more ground, uh, especially now. And the thing is that these people have always been around. Okay, Th this is not something that's new, but rather this is now something that's a problem that we're sort of reproducing over and over and over again okay so what we see happening in places like virginia is that it's un it's unfortunately the culmination of something that's been going on for years and years you know this this is not surprising and then people are suddenly going oh this is trump it's it's not trump i mean for example you had people like emmett till getting uh, lynched you had other people getting lynched and killed because of their skin color um, you had people like Komodo Amalo in the 70s, or is it in the 70s or 90s? I can't remember. But you have Komodo Amalo being shot by the police. You have all these examples of various forms of police brutality and institutionalized slavery. Like, for example, the idea of the prison system and the, uh, uh, the prison system as a reproduction of slavery, like Angela Davis suggests. So, again, like, these are processes that are reoccurring, okay? These are processes that, you know, continue to affect people of color. So don't be surprised when this happened in modern day America. It ha it's happening in 2017 because it happened 300 years ago or 400 years ago. This is the way things were built. This is the way things people made them to be. And then as a result, and, and interestingly enough, you know, we don't, 
uh, pay attention to issues of discrimination. We say like things, for example, like, oh, well, you're not getting the job, you know, you're not qualified enough or, but actually, guess what? You know, you like with the same credentials, uh, with someone of color having the same credentials as someone who's not of color, um, they are completely stigmatized and thrown out of the job market. Okay, and it's much harder for them to get a job. It's much harder, again, looking at issues of culture and representation, like where are the people of color in the media and, and positive roles and examples of role models, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so this is a big problem. Okay, this is something where we need to start talking about what's been happening and ways that we can correct that as opposed to, oh my God, this horrible thing happened. And again, this horrible thing happened was horrible. It is terrible, but it's a culmination of so much for people in this country. And it's really unfortunate that it has to come to events like these that makes us stop to think about what's going on. Um, because again, this is something where if we paid attention, you know, we would have stopped it in the bud. Instead, there are people that ignore these problems or they say, oh, well, you know, you're equal, stop complaining, whatever. You know, we had Obama, but guess what? Things happened during Obama, Zara. Um, the idea of Michael Brown being killed, the idea of, you know, uh, uh, Eric Garner, okay? Police shootings were still a problem. Just as, for example, the Charleston church shooting happened during Obama. So, so again, this is because of a history of racism in the past, okay? The symbols of the Celtic cross, the symbols of the Hesseth, like all of these sort of neo-Nazi symbols and iconography are pervasive in these uh, kinds of white supremacist cultures. So take a moment and think about all the things that happen and get yourself educated because really education is the way to understand that we shouldn't be basically repeating the past. Okay, because immediately when we can when we stop treating people like people just as they did way back when during this country's founding, you know, this is sort of the problem. Like we immediately say, like, you are not entitled to this because you were not a person. And that's inherently the core of all these kinds of things. Anyways, I hope this has been relatively informative and I hope this has been, um, you know, I hope you paid attention and, you know. If you have any comments, feel free to leave them. If you want to say hello, go ahead. And if you found this helpful, please say hello. But again, we need to stop, you know, turning a blind eye to these situations. When somebody says they're discriminated against, when somebody says that they're fetishized, when somebody says that they're treated in a certain way because of not just the color of their skin, but what's, you know, what their gender identity is, what their sexual identity is, what their age is, et cetera, et cetera. The minute we stop, you know, treating people uh, like second class citizen is when we can all start make to make better decisions and start to make things equal. So again, I hope this helped and I hope, um, you know, this, this conversation really, you know, lent itself to an exploration of why is it that this happened? Was it necessarily because of Trump? Uh, or was it because th these issues have been persisting? Okay. And this is where um, I go, well, actually, it's persisting, and he's just the figurehead. He is just the representation of it, but he is not the, he is not, like, the sudden, he's not the sudden, like, cause of it. He is the symptom, not the cause of these problems. And the minute we realize it is the minute we begin to fix our society. Have a good weekend. Bye!